Günther Schlierkamp made bodybuilding history in 2002 by becoming the only man in bodybuilding history to get a victory over Ronnie King Coleman during, and I mean smack dab in the middle of his reign as Mr. Olympia champion. And of course, it was at the 2002 show of strength and what a night. And of course, it goes without saying, this was the absolute peak of Günther Schlierkamp's bodybuilding career. And today, we're going to go back to the start and look at the rise and then fall of his bodybuilding career. I guess we'll see if it's a if it was an actual fall down. Or obviously, if you unless you retire in your prime, your your placings are going to fall. This guy competed as a teen, competed several times. I, I assume as a, as a teenager. I mean, the guy was born in 1970. In Germany, by the way. So it would have been in the late 80s. He did uh, win his first big competition in 1990. The German Championships. 1992, fast forward to the European Amateur Championships. Which he did win, of course. He also won the German Championships that year. Hard to find pictures on all these. 1993, Günther Schlierkamp won the World Amateur Championships. And in doing so... Well, he, he got his pro card. Time to compete with the big boys, seemingly. 1994, he would compete at a couple of Grand Prix, Grand Prix England and Germany, placing 8th in both. And then, I believe he received a special invite to the Olympia, because 1994, he made his Mr. Olympia in debut. But I, I'm sure he didn't earn, earn a way to, with the two 8th place finishes. So, I'm sure it was an invite 1995 was a breakout year for Gunter. The Canada Pro Cup, the guy placed second, and he actually got a victory over Milo Sarchev. Ronnie King Coleman won that event, but Milos, he was a very top ranked competitor. So for Gunter to get a, a victory over him, the Canada Pro Cup, I mean, kudos to him. And then he went and got 10th. At the Grand Prix Ukraine. On into 1996, Günther would make his Arnold's Classics debut. He placed 11th, not the greatest. He would also get an 11th place finish at that year's Night of Champions. Hey, it's Edward Kowak. He was still competing in 96? Huh! Huh, interesting. Also, in 96, Günther received a 9th place finish at that year's San Jose Pro. Hard to find pitchers. Some of these events, on to 97. He got 6th at the Canada Pro Cup. Like I said, hard to find some of the pitchers at, at, at some of these events. 1997, he also competed in the Ironman, and he received a DQ. Not a Dairy Queen treat. A disqualification. What, did he flip out and start throwing tables around? Could you imagine? Rawr! Wow, that would be funny. But anyway, I, I don't know. I don't know the reasoning. Knight of Champions, 97, he got 9th, he got 9th, and he also received an 11th place finish at that year, or, uh, yeah, that year's San Jose Pro. On into the following year, 1998, Gunter, he got a, competed in a couple of Grand Prix, including a 6th place finish at that year's Finland, and also a 6th at that year's Germany, Grand Prix Germany, Germany's baby please. Then on to the Knight of Champions, which he seemed to always compete in. He got 10th. And then again, strangely enough, he made it to the Olympia. So, special invite every year? He did not place anyway. San Francisco Pro, he got 9th. Toronto Pro, he got 6th. He competed a pile, this guy. 1999, he only competed twice. Which was short a short year for him. That would be a lot of uh, competitions for nowadays competitor placed ninth at the Arnold's classics and fifth at the iron man actually did quite well beat lee priest 99 iron man on into 2000 and i think this was a breakout year for this man he got sixth at the Arnold's classics so you know he was there to to show the other guys that he did in fact belong belong he got fourth at the Grand Prix England that year. Also a fourth place finish at the Ironman Pro. So yeah, 
Come Olympia time, he got 12th. So, you know, at least it was a placing, for goodness sakes, and not just a, you know, you don't place. He also received 6th place at the World Pro Championships in 2000 to round that year off. 2001, would this be his year? He got 10th at the Grand Prix England. He got 9th at the Night of Champions. So not a stellar year. He did, in fact, make it to the Olympia once again. So, you know, always it's just an open invite to Günther and the Olympia. He got 15th, so he slipped in placings. Toronto Pro, he got 6th. So, you know, not too bad. And that was 2001. And in 2002, Günther Schlierkamp hit the RFBB like a tidal wave. That is what I said, a tidal wave. This guy, he was shredded to the dice. He was peeled. He was razor sharp at the 2002 Mr. Olympia event. And dare I say, dare I say, that most fans would say anyway, he's an uncrowned Mr. Olympia champion in 2002. I don't think the judges seen him coming. Coleman was off. Uh, a lot of them were not 100%. Cormier included, uh, Kevin Lavroni. Gunter was. Gunter was on. Should he have won? Well, I guess that's a story for another day. He took fifth. Unbelievably, he took fifth. Which for Gunter at that time, on paper, was unbelievable. But he could have even got a higher placing. And then, the 2002 show of strength. It was basically came down to Ronnie Coleman and Gunter himself. There was, Chris Cormier was there, but these two were posing down, you know, going pose for pose. Coleman was a little bit improved from the Olympia. So I'm sure in everybody's mind, he was still going to do enough to defeat Gunther. In my opinion, and yes, I admit you can't tell everything from pictures, but you can investigate. And I believe Gunther was more shredded at the show of strength than he's ever been. He was, like I said earlier, peeled. He was even more so at the Night of Champions. And then it came down to the final two, and the announcer announced your winner Gunther Schlierkamp could you imagine the feeling of this guy not only did you just win your first pro show my estimation guys this was his first pro show win and that is unbelievable and more importantly you get a victory over the current Mr. Olympia champion this must have been the sweetest moment not never mind Gunther's career, but anybody's bodybuilding career. Wow, wow. And for a modest guy like that, a seemingly modest guy, to have that happen, that is un unreal. So that was the very peak of this roller coaster ride of a bodybuilding career. And he shot up from 2001 to 2002 like a rocket. Did he soar down? Well, not really. Not really. 2003, he was still doing pretty good. He got third at the England Grand Prix. He lost only to, to Jay Cutler and Ernie Taylor, strangely enough. He got fourth at that year's Grand Prix Holland. Then came the Olympia. I mean, was he any better? I, I think he was almost as good in 2003. He looked pretty darn good, but I don't think anybody, including Günther, Seen a 300-pound Ronnie Coleman? And no, I don't know if he was exactly 300. He was close to it. But I'm sure he did not see Coleman coming 300 pounds. I'm sure if he did, he figured that he, he probably would have went for size, which was evidently not the case. There was other factors aside from a 300-pound Ronnie King Coleman. Jay Cutler was really getting into his own. And at the end of the day, Gunter... All he mustered was a fifth place finish, the same thing that he placed one year prior. It seemed that the sting of his 2002 dominance was rapidly fading, rapidly fading indeed. He competed at the Arnold Classic in 2004, 
and received a fourth place finish. So yeah, it was dwindling fast. And with the 2004 Mr. Olympia event, Gunter slipping in placings. I mean, even Gunter himself probably figured, you know, that, 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 that's it. That's it. He placed sixth. And in 2005, something happened. He seemed to have a new fire in his eyes. Not only that, but he was peeled. He was shredded to the dice. Looked like he had improved for sure. I would say absolutely. And aside from Ronnie King Coleman and Jay Cutler, who were, you know, it was the Jay and Ronnie show. Aside from them two and one other gentleman, Gustavo Bedell, who was one of the best bodybuilders that year for sure. Gunter would have been Mr. Olympia, aside from three guys. I mean, that's unbelievable. He placed fourth. So 2005, arguably his best look. Unbelievable. So he had a new fire in that belly. He figured, you know, I'm going to get that 2002 fire again. And the thing of it is, guys, he was being trained back in 2002 by Charles Glass, world-renowned coach, trainer, guru, whatever. I mean, Dexter the Blade Jackson, another one that trained with him. So he went back and trained with Charles Glass for the 2006 Mr. Olympia. He was going all out. You know, he increased his placings. He got fourth the year before from, from sixth. I mean, and you know what? At the end of the day, he looked good. He looked conditioned. He actually improved in those back shots where he did need to improve. But he got 10th. The IFBB seemingly putting him to the back burner. Guys like Tony Freeman, big Hostetler studs like that, hitting the scene. And wow, you can you can clearly see Gunter looks like a couple inches taller than uh, than Tony Freeman, who's a legit six foot one. So that. That claim of Gunter being six foot one, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. And you guys at home shouldn't either. But anyway, that was it for Gunter Schleerkamp, the 2006 Mr. Olympia event, placing 10th. I'm sure very dejected, very upset. But you know what? At the end of the day, nobody will ever take away that 2002 show of strength victory. I mean, my goodness. Has to be the best year of Gunter's life. And realistically, 2002 Olympia, he won the night. The fans were for him. And at the end of the day, it's all about the fans, right? I'm sure to Gunter it is. And like I said, nobody's ever going to take away that win. For, for 2002, for one brief night, he was the best bodybuilder on the face of the earth. Because he beat the Olympia champion, right? So yeah, he, he was kind of Mr. Olympia in a way and uncrowned as well but you know what the most the most important part about this guy Gunter Schleerkamp never heard a bad word about him always hear that he was a really nice guy always in a good mood always willing to lend a helping hand never bringing the room down always bringing the room up and that type of personality I mean, that, that's that's just great. That's just great. And I guess the same could be said about the other gentlemen in this picture. Jay Cutler, Ronnie Coleman, Milo Sarchev. All very nice gentlemen. And not to mention all world-class bodybuilders. And Gunter, he belongs in that crowd of some of the greatest bodybuilders of all time. That's about it, ladies and gentlemen. Really hope you enjoyed this feature on the rise and then fall of Günther Schleerkamp. It's too darn bad he never did get that brass ring, but I mean, pretty stellar career nonetheless. Hit thumbs up on the video, guys, and please subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Have a great one.